What's going on there, folks? Good evening. Uh, Earthmaster here jumping in. It is about 8.30 p.m. West Coast time here in California on October 8th, 2020. And take a look at the Earthquake 3D Globe. It shows the latest quake on the map over here around the Indonesia Islands area where we've been really active over the last 24 hours. A 5.2 strike in there well to the west of this large 6.3 they had oh, uh, quite some time ago now way way earlier uh this morning late night early this morning uh it's pretty large quake there and also a little deep uh, you can see it, uh, the uh, rings raised off the globe a little bit there indicating the depth of the earthquake not as deep as this 4.2 struck uh that's pretty super deep one there 623 kilometers of course we did see that uh what was it 6.0 that struck back there a couple days ago Roughly about the same depth as that uh, large 6.0 that struck there. So looking at the overall picture, definitely some major plate movement along the Pacific area. And this is much further back than 24 hours. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys a pretty good uh, view of the tremendous amount of activity that has occurred over here along the southern part, southwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Up north here, we did have some major, uh, well, moderate, deep, really deep earthquake activity up here moderate on magnitude 5.0 strike in there um, along the Pacific plate there six uh, 519 kilometers below the surface for that one over here on, on along the west coast not a whole lot uh, to compensate for that movement but uh, there's been some quakes not just not a whole lot out here along the west coast that I would have uh, expected to see Here's the USGS map here real quick. And uh, not a whole lot of activity. This is the 2.5 map and above. 2.5 magnitude and above. You can see a little bit of earthquake activity down here near the swarm area or the old swarm area, the 3.1 near Westmoreland, California. We need to go back over here to the all magnitude so we can see a little bit more. And you can see the quake swarm has eh, pretty much all but died out here. So for that 3.1 and a couple other microquakes, it's pretty quiet. It's getting a little bit quiet each day that we check the map here. Or I should say a little bit more quiet. And um, some further activity around the San Jacinto Fault area. That's this region right here. Some microquakes swarm in that area. Uh, not a whole lot around the greater Los Angeles area. Looking pretty quiet. Small little quake there on the southern part of the San Andreas Fault. Or just off of it, looks like. But uh, definitely within the, the region there, the Mojave section, 1.1, <laughs> just a little bitty microquake. Uh, and not a whole lot else along that plate boundary there, looking pretty quiet. Ridgecrest, you know, it's a it's pretty much daily, nightly thing where they're getting a handful of quakes every day. And every night, nothing, mo nothing moderate or major, just all pretty much microquakes there within the region. And a few small quakes along the creeping section of the... San Andreas Fault here. Nevada, the same story down there as well. Just a little bit of uh, aftershock activity following that uh, earthquake, the larger earthquake that struck there some months ago now. Um, what do we got up here? Right around the Cascadia subduction zone, just off of it, or actually just within it, I should say. Uh, a little 2.1 magnitude quake there, striking 23 kilometers below the surface. And uh, pretty quiet. I mean, still seen some microquakes up here around Washington and whatnot. Um, other than that, looking uh, pretty darn quiet out here, folks. Little one out there in Ohio, 2.3, 13 kilometers below the surface. Kind of deep out here. No reports of anybody filling it. Uh, I think if that was a little bit more shallower, I think folks would definitely be uh, reporting that quake there. And a little one over here around North Carolina as well. Uh, but taking a look at the rest of the globe. Some activity up here around the Aleutian Islands, 5.7. But the big story over here is definitely uh, all the movement around the uh, Papua New Guinea region, Indonesia, and out here to Fiji. Uh, the 6.3 that struck this morning was originally, I believe, a 6.7. Uh, downgraded there to a 6.3 at 103.5, 103.5 103 kilometers below the surface there pretty uh, deep movement but of course no stranger out here two deep earthquakes in this region and tonight it looks like that pressure is definitely working its way to the west here 
uh, in this area. 5.2 out there, the latest quake there. What's that? Katabu? Katabu. Something like that. Indonesia, um, the latest quake there, 5.2. Pretty quiet out here around Europe and Asia area. Not a whole lot to report here from the USGS. Not saying there isn't any earthquakes, but just nothing above the, uh, I think it's a 4.0 threshold there with the uh, USGS here internationally. So that's looking uh, pretty quiet as uh, far as the trimmer map goes. I haven't really checked that today. Uh, wow, okay. I'm at, wow. That's uh, pretty active once again. This <laughs> uh, definitely haven't checked it today. So I thought it would be calming down, but definitely not. We're looking at 566 uh, epicenters here. Shaking the, uh, well not shaking, but slipping and sliding underneath the North, North American plate there. I kind of want to bring up the, uh, see if I can do that here real quick. I want to bring up some dates here. Let's go back a couple days here from that date to that date here over the last five days. And we can get a broader scale of uh, what's going on here. Looking at 2,000 epicenters of trimmer out here just from the 4th to today. That's uh, a pretty big deal out there. And uh, there's a lot of sections here that have not seen any type of movement or any slippage here off the coast of Oregon. There's some, but uh, man, you have to think that some of this is definitely adding to the uh, the locked section of, this, of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Definitely an increase in pressure out there and uh, uh, a higher risk of earthquakes out there when we see this type of uh, enormous <laughs> trimmer. I mean, that's pretty crazy, 2,000 epicenters. And it's clear as day, that is for sure. Northern California not seeing a whole lot. Looks like just part of it there near the border. But a lot of times we'll see this trimmer extend down into uh, portions of Northern California, but way down below, not at the surface. Uh, roughly, I think 30 or 40 kilometers or so, I believe, down, downstream there in the slippage or in, in the uh, slipping area. I have to bring up that map again, show you guys uh, a little bit better description uh, of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone here. Kind of hard to imagine it if you're not 100% sure what it looks like, but uh, basically the Juan de Fuca plate, which kind of sits offshore here and slips underneath the North American plate. This area right here is the slippage area, the uh, subducting area, not the stuck part. The stuck part is upstream, more shallower, and sits further to the west over here. That's the area that we have to watch. But we have seen uh, you know, deep earthquakes in this region as well. Uh, sometimes the slippage just doesn't uh, slip in certain parts and that's why we see some uh, buildup of pressure even downstream and that can release uh, some some uh, some decent pressure and create a pretty good sized earthquake. Nothing like the lock section does but uh, yeah that's just pretty impressive right there. Yellowstone National Park real quick looking pretty mellow but once again tonight, no swarming activities. A little bit of wind events showing up on numerous stations here. Pretty quiet, folks. Some wind over here as well on the south part. Uh, what else we got here? I kind of want to talk about a major hurricane out here, folks. That uh, is churning out there in the Gulf. I just refreshed this map here at 8 p.m. Thursday, my time. And this thing is going to give Louisiana a good punch. Louisiana has been uh, pretty much on the the bullseye for numerous hurricanes, it seems like. Or at least a couple. I shouldn't say numerous. But then again, the, you know, there's still a month or so left of the uh, hurricane season. This one's a pretty good one. Hurricane Delta. It uh, currently sits at a, what do we got, 105 miles per hour with gusts up to 130. So we're looking at category two at the moment, moving north, northwest at about 10 miles per hour. That's going to take a sharp turn directly towards Louisiana area. We're talking about Cameron. Uh, what's the other place? St. Charles and Port Charles area. I believe that's the, uh, the name of the town. I'm always confused about that, uh, that name down there. 
<laughs> Let's see here. Just reading a funny, funny message here, real quick. I want to get that name specifically correct here before I uh, spit it out. So, yeah, you got Port. Ar Wait a minute. You got uh, what do we got out there? Lake Charles, I believe, is it Cameron, Lake Charles area. Yeah, those areas are are definitely under the gun once again. Uh, some hurricane warnings and whatnot being set up there in place. Satellite view real quick. Shows the, uh, well, it's, it's looking disorganized, but we're starting to it, redevelop an eye right in here. You can kind of see that area right there where that eye is going to start rapidly developing. And they're expecting this thing to get to a category uh, um, three or four, close to, close to four, I believe. Let's go back here real quick here. See where I'm at. Yeah, see right here these red red indicating category three strength, which it's almost at. I mean all you need is about another six miles per hour and you're at category three. And it looks like it's gonna stay that way for a little bit and then make specific landfall as a category two according to the hurricane center but you know there's always with that warm water out there's always a chance that we could see this thing strengthen more uh, and hold together more as it makes its way into louisiana and i tell you what when i was out there last time i just was bouncing all over the place i really didn't know where to go when i was out there chasing that hurricane uh, and then I, would, I found myself in a bad spot so that's kind of why i abandoned that uh that trip but uh yeah we're looking at Potentially tomorrow um, in the afternoon, 5 p.m. it looks like, for landfall right around the Louisiana coast there as a Category 2. And, of course, it's subject to change. We'll have to see what it, what it wants to do. And, um, of course, weekend as it heads off to the north and northeast there uh, throughout the day or throughout the night and into the day there on Saturday. But uh, it's looking pretty... Uh, it's looking pretty scary there. I wanted to show you guys the windy map here. This is just wind gusts. I have this here on the wind gust setting right now. Uh, currently, it looks like what at 8 p.m. here. And we're looking at some strong wind gusts out there. I kind of like to put this thing into motion. And this here is just another weather predictor, you know, weather forecast model. And I, I kind of like it. It's been pretty accurate, but it's hard for any specific weather. Um, models to accurately predict hurricanes just because they're so unpredictable I mean they're just a storm and a beast uh, and they basically do what they want so we'll take a look at this scale real quick and see where the sh she wants to go right towards the Lake Charles area it looks like Lake Charles is gonna get uh, looks like the northwest side of the of hurricane uh, Delta right there and that's uh, not the strongest winds but definitely some <laughs> Some strong winds in there and then again th this is just the wind gust and of course this is subject to change once again as far as the north side of or north um, northeast side looks like Lafayette possibly getting in there uh, Jennings right around the strongest area of the hurricane here uh, Lake Charles might be directly in it if it actually looks like it is it's it maybe just right off to it And then from there, it kind of weekends and uh, goes up to the northeast and whatnot, bringing with it lots of rain that I wish we had. I mean, we're oh, I don't even want to be I don't even want to talk about our weather. I'm so disappointed in it. I do not like it. So yeah, um, you know, be prepared, folks, for potentially a catastrophic hurricane out there. Those poor folks are, you know, some of them haven't even attempted to rebuild over there around the uh, Lake Charles area. I don't even know about Cameron. Um, that's that little town I drove through there. There was no, actually there was a couple people that had stayed for that last hurricane there, but I don't know what it looks like now. Not uh, probably not good. And after this, it may not even be there. But they are kind of let on the west side, I guess. There, if that, yeah, if that makes any uh, any difference there, but. We're kind of tracking that, folks. I'm thinking about switching over the live stream tonight to cover the hurricane activity. 
what I do is update the, well, it self updates the Hurricane Delta stats and whatnot. And also, I found a, uh, a webcam area to monitor, um, you know, the views that come in or the uh, scenery as Hurricane Delta comes in on shore. Uh, just because Yellowstone's kind of kind of dark right now, so I'll probably switch it over to the uh, Louisiana coast webcam. Real quick, in this day in earthquake history, back in 2005, October 8th, pretty huge earthquake, 7.6 in Pakistan. Quite a bit of uh, bad news there for those folks when that earthquake hit. A lot of uh, damage and whatnot. Also, there in the Leeward Islands in 1974, a big 7.5 struck. Kind of just east of the area where we're seeing that Puerto Rico swarm there that has been occurring for months now, uh, the 7.5 struck, just to the east of where Puerto Rico sits. So that area, no doubt, can see uh, uh, some pretty good sized quakes there in that region. A lot of damage and whatnot uh, being reported. Let's see, tremor was also felt in parts of eastern Puerto Rico, 450 kilometers away. Woo. Uh, Santa Cruz Mountains back in 1865 in California, M6.3 struck. Strong earthquake caused severe damage in several towns, including uh, quite a few of these names here. I haven't really heard too much about that earthquake. Of course, 1865, wow. I might have to do a little bit of digging around, see what I can come up with with that specific earthquake. I've never actually heard about that one. Anyway, folks, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to work on here a little bit is uh, probably taking off the Yellowstone webcam. It's pretty dark. It's neat to look at during the day, no doubt. And sometimes cool to look at at night. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to switch that over and, and cover the uh, hurricane for now. Hurricane Delta. Latest earthquake there, looks like in Texas, 3.0, just now. Looks like right around the Pico, Texas area. There we go. And also seeing a little earthquake showing up there on the Barrett Station there in Southern California, uh, right around the swarm area. So we could, could potentially see that swarming kick back up, who knows. Anyway, folks, um, have a good night. What are we sitting at here? About 18 minutes on a video. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be working on that a little bit tonight, switching the stream over, and uh, we'll cover it a little bit more in detail tomorrow as that powerful hurricane makes its way towards the folks there in Louisiana. Sucks. It really does. have to, uh, you know, if you were just starting to rebuild and seeing this new hurricane come in, that's not, not good. Have a good night, folks. We will chat at you guys later. Stay safe.